everyone. I'm Rosella, and welcome to Cooking with Nonna. I have a very, very special guest today. You guys all know Nonna Romana. Say hello. Hello, everybody. And Nonna Romana is my Nonna, and I brought her here today to do our very special Easter episode. Uh, in Italian, we all say Buona Pasqua. Say Buona, Buona Pasqua, everybody. <laughs> uh, what are we going to make today? What are we going to cook today, Nonna? Pizza rustica. We're going to do the Italian classic pizza rustica or pizza gaina if you're more comfortable saying that. That's all right. We're going to do a wonderful, tasty pizza rustica. And for those of you who don't know, a pizza rustica is basically a savory pie crust. And within the savory pie, there's a mixture of eggs and cheeses and different meats. And uh, you don't have to use exactly what we're doing today. You can use a variety of different meats, the ones that you like. This is just the ones that, uh, the, the stuff that my family likes to eat. And you can make this for Easter Sunday, for like an appetizer. It works really, really well. Make it a couple days before. Traditionally, this is made on Good Friday. It's not eaten on Good Friday because it has meat in it, but it is traditionally made on Good Friday to break the Lenten fast. And then it's eaten on Easter Sunday. So, no, no, what are we going to start making? You got to start about uh, first uh, you, uh, you put a uh, butter. We're going to start making our dough, and our dough has very, yeah. it's a very simple dough for the crust. We're going to use some very cold butter. You don't need to use softened butter for this, you want cold fats. And then we're going to use just some plain flour, all purpose flour. Mm -hmm. And we're going to throw this all together in our KitchenAid stand mixer. Nana remembers doing this all by hand at the time. And we have our dough hook attachment. And we're going to start running this slow at first, and then we're going to pick up the speed. And it's going to absorb all the butter, and it's going to be like these little beads. So the flour absorbed all the butter, and we're ready to add our salt. Going to add some eggs. Two eggs. And of course, for exact measurements, just go to cookingwithnona.com. And we're going to add some milk. And I can turn this off, and I'm just going to scrape down the sides of the bowl here. So you don't have to do this in a stand mixer at all. You can do this all by hand. We just love technology. I know Nonna loves her KitchenAid stand mixer, right? Yeah, very nice. You don't work too much when you use <laughs> KitchenAid. <laughs> so we're just going to wait a few minutes for this to come together. It's going to come together into a nice ball of dough, and then we're going to be ready to roll it out. Okay, so our dough has finished mixing now, and you know when it's done because everything will have pulled away from the bottom of the bowl. And mm -hmm. dough is one of those tricky things. It totally depends on the amount of humidity in the air. It could depend on so many factors. So if it looks a little bit more dry to you, then you should add a little bit more milk. If it looks a little too wet, add a little bit more flour and just fix it up. You'll, you'll know because you'll, you'll know a texture from touching the dough. You'll know the amount of humidity that's supposed to be in it. It's not supposed to stick to your hands and it's supposed to feel humid to the touch. So this looks perfect. This looks yeah, good. Nice. Looks so nice. So now what we're going to do good. with this, we're going to take some saran wrap and our dough needs to rest a little bit. So we're going to take some saran wrap, wrap it up, and give it a little rest for about a half hour. About 30 minutes should be sufficient. And in that time, we're going to start making our filling. OK, so now that our dough is resting, we're going to go ahead and make our filling. And the filling for a pizza rustica really depends on what you have around. I mean, we can totally apply the seasonal mentality of Italian cooking here, where it's use what you have, use what's available, whatever the supermarket has in this case, or whatever you like. Uh, this was a very special thing at the time. It was for a holiday, so there are meats and cheeses and things that peasants would probably save up a lot to buy once a year on that special day. So what are we going to start with? You start with this one. 
So we have some basket cheese. And if you don't know what basket cheese is, it is similar to a ricotta, but it's like a ricotta that's been uh, dried out. It's a drier form of ricotta. So if you don't have basket cheese available at your Italian deli or anything, you can just take some regular old ricotta and leave it in the fridge in like a colander for a day or two with a dish under it and all the excess moisture is going to drip out. So it's going to be a lot drier. It looks similar to mozzarella in here, but this basket cheese comes in a little uh, plastic basket and it's similar in taste to a ricotta, but not as, uh, not as sharp. So then we're going to add some pecorino. What else, Nonna? FP provision. This provolone. This is some sharp provolone to give it a little kick. We got some mozzarella. Of course, you always need mozzarella. And it's very important to not add any salt to your pizza rustica mixture. I got one piece. Because all your ingredients have a lot of salt in them. So we have some mortadella here. And you want to cut the mortadella into chunks. If you go to the deli, you can ask the, uh, the deli to cut it in about a, a half an inch slice for you. And then you just make little cubes out of it. Put this over here. And we have some prosciutto. Prosciutto, yeah. Prosciutto. So like I said, you can use whatever kind of meats you like. You can use salami. We have some soppressata. This so if you soppressata. don't like soppressata, this is a soppressata that we made on our show a couple episodes back, if you remember. So this is homemade soppressata. So it's my family's own special blend. But you can use some regular salami. And we're going to mix that together. And what binds this together is just eggs. And we're going to mix this up. Mix nice. So pizza rustica or pizza gaina, people who say pizza gaina, pizza gaina is a dialectual term. And pizza gaina literally means a stuffed pizza. So the pizza part would be referring to the crust. And gaina means stuffed or filled. Right, pizza gaina. Yeah. There are people. Che, che chi lo chiama pizza gaina questa? Yeah. For me, I call pizza rustica. Yeah, pizza rustica. But in our dialect, like pizza china would be the dialectual term, which would mean stuffed pizza. So Italy has many, many dialects. People say the same thing in many, many different ways. So you just want to give this a really good mix. Make sure all the egg is incorporated because that's what's going to bind everything together and stick it together when you bake it in the oven. I think that's enough. Looks good. Oh, that's good. enough. Yeah. This looks awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm just going to put this to the side over here. And we're going to take out our dough and we're going to start rolling this out. You gotta leave a little piece because of the you gotta put a, the strap in the top. Let me just when you okay. finish. So we're gonna take a knife and we're gonna cut a piece out for our lattice top. That's enough. A little more. Put a little more. It's better. Yeah, yeah just in case. More. In case, yeah. We're gonna set a little bit of dough to the side because we're gonna do a really beautiful lattice top. And. Here we have our dough that we can start rolling out. And this is Nonna's special tool. This is not exactly a rolling pin. This is the leg of a table, probably, or the end of a broom or a mop or something. Her original Nonna rolling pin was the leg of a table that belonged to her mother. But a couple years ago, we did a class at Italy, and I broke it <laughs> in a door. And I was very, very sorry. But uh, my dad remedied the situation and just cut the ends off a mop and <laughs> made her a new one. So we're going to start rolling this out. So you want to make this about a quarter of an inch thick. You don't want it to be too thin because it is holding a very liquidy filling and you don't want it to drip out. Okay, so I've rolled out our dough for our crust, and it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Obviously, I did not make no perfect circle over here, but this is going to do. 
And the way you can tell is that you just put your pan on top of it. You see that it's big enough. And we want this to fill the sides of our pan as well. So you want to roll it out much bigger than you, than you think. You don't need to just make nine inches. So to get this in our pan, we're gonna, I'm going to have Nana do this part. We're going to roll it onto the rolling pin, and then we're going to drop it in. Now, see, you gotta go easy. Yeah, I'm just gonna hold the side of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna adjust. You gotta, you gotta push in the bar. In yeah. The, mm. You wanna just press it in to all the little indentations. Mm -hmm. Don't worry if pieces break off. You can always take them and put them back. And if you have excess, we're gonna trim that down. You better cut from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have a nice little tool to just trim the excess off. Just gonna work some crust up the sides that didn't make it quite so far. Okay. You cut the this one. So we have this little double-sided pizza cutter. Yeah. And yeah. Very nice. This gives us really nice lines. Mm -hmm. okay. So now we're going to take our filling. Nona, you want to help? And we're going to fill our pizza rustica. This looks so good. Okay. Okay. You gotta fix now. Let's see. Now you wanna even it out. You wanna mm -hmm. smooth out the filling. Okay. All right. Put it back some. So I'm just gonna put our pizza rustica right here while we roll out our strips to make our lattice top. So now we have our excess dough that we set aside, and we're gonna use this to roll out and make our lattice strips. So this is really, really quick. Lattices look fancy, and I used to get all bent out of shape when I saw a lattice on something, and I was like, oh my god, I cannot do that, but yes, you can. It's going to be great. So you just roll it out, and you want these strips thinner than the crust that we made. Okay, that's enough. Okay. So now with a ravioli cutter, we're going to cut out strips, take this piece away, like this thick. Yeah. So we're going to do about an inch, about an inch thick. Don't go crazy if they're not all the same size, it's <laughs> going to be fine. So we're just going to add this one to the top here. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to take this piece, yeah. put it right here. So we make it straight. So this one on this side, she's going to open up this one. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to rest that one here. This way it overlaps like a real lattice. OK, perfect. So now, see, we have a beautiful lattice top. Everything is overlapping. So all this excess, oh, we can just use our, this one. We use our special tool. I love this thing. Yeah, cut, cut the line. And we're going to go against the edge of the crust that we made, the original crust. So, Nana, you want to take the pieces? Yeah, sure. Thank you. See, that was easier than, than you thought. Just gonna take this off. Trim this. Okay. 
Lannis. Once our Lannis is all trimmed, we're going to just go around and make sure that all the pieces are pushed in together. So you make sure that they don't separate when, they go, when it goes in the oven. Just pinch that into the crust, like so. Okay. So now that we've finished assembling our pizza rustica, we're just going to brush it with a little bit of egg wash. This way it gets so nice and golden brown on top. So we're going to take some egg, and we got our little brush. This brush looks like it's been around for a while now. <laughs> and it's going to... Just in the strap, you got to put a... Just on the eggs. crust and around. Yeah. So you want to go around and paint the lattice with your little mm -hmm. egg wash brush. And once we're done, we're going to pop it in the oven for an hour and 15 minutes at 350. Okay, so this looks mm. amazing. This is ready. Do you see how beautiful and golden brown this is on top? Very nice. And this we let cool down in the oven just a little, little bit. We left it in there a few more minutes so it's not too, too hot. Mm. Oh, that is it's perfect. Very nice. So see, perfect. see, the crust is perfectly golden brown mm -hmm. all around. And we're ready. You want to taste? Yeah. It's not Easter Sunday, but we'll make an exception. Wow, that is so amazing. Oops, lost a little piece of crust. Very good. See? It's going to be great. Mm -hmm. You got a taste? Yeah, sure. Okay. So good. I love it. Mm-hmm. Me too. I love it. I love all the flavors we got going on today. It's very cheesy. Really love the flavors from the prosciutto, mortadella. Mm -hmm. This is going to be so amazing for Easter. We're going to have to make another one for Easter Sunday because I'm eating this one. But from me and Nonna, we want to say Buona Pasqua. Yeah. Are oh, you going to eat all of it? No. No. Last, the last mm. episode, she didn't want to eat anything. This one, she's going to eat the whole thing. Yeah. Very good. I love it. Buona Pasqua, everyone. Buona pasta a tutti e a tutto il mondo. Thank you for being my nonna. <laughs>